welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today it's time to take a look at another vintage board game. Just when you thought it was safe to go back into the board game room, comes Shark Alert. Shark Alert was released by Action GT here in the UK in 1987, a fact which I'm sure has absolutely nothing to do with the release of Jaws the Revenge that same year. The fourth outing in the Jaws saga, Jaws the Revenge sees a completely random shark trying to hunt down Chief Brody's family for his crimes against sharks in the previous films and is considered to be one of the worst in the series. But of course most people wouldn't have known that at the time of release so it was a good way for Action GT to bring out a game that was parallel to the film in order to try and cash in on that. Now this is a two to four player game for ages five and over, and like a lot of Action GT games, is battery operated. This one takes a D-sized battery, it's motorized, and like a lot of vintage games, particularly vintage Action GT games, that motor you might find has stopped working. So you might have to connect it to the battery and give it a couple of twists in order to jump start that motor and get it working, which is what I did have to do with this one. Now looking at the box art, there's really not a lot in the way of artwork. We've got the title here and a shark with some waves in the background, but it's mainly photographs. Nice big photographs showing the board and some close-ups down the right hand side, which is very standard with vintage games of this period. On the back, you can see it's a strange twist and flip in order to get it the right way up rather than just turning it but there is nothing on here which is any different it is exactly the same on both sides there's no additional information or pictures so i think we need to take a closer look at this the game comes with 12 plastic balls three of each of the four colors here red green blue and yellow Four plastic lifeboats which match the colour of plastic balls or little men and these just kind of clip into the side of the board with these clips here and these are going to be your home space. These are where you're trying to get your little men back to safely in order to end the game. You've got the shark itself and this is a very very basic sculpt. There's really no detail on here. There's a little bit of gills here but that's really it everything else is smooth plastic i would have really liked to have seen more detail on this it would have been really good and i also would have preferred a better coloration on this this black kind of makes it look more like a killer whale rather than a shark i really would have liked it to be more of a gray tone to match like jaws and great whites the mouth here with these serrated teeth is just big enough to go over a ball and kind of hold that in place for a little while and on the underside there is this kind of metal track on here and it's very important that this is metal because this will use magnetism as part of this game so this has got to be able to attract to the spindle in the center which will move it and this kind of wobbly track here ensures that the shark is going to move randomly as it moves around the board. And we've got the actual game board itself, which is a nice, big, good quality plastic board. It is quite thick plastic here. It's not going to snap easily or break. You can see you've got the board going round here. Here's where the little men or balls are going to go. You've got the four holes in the center here that the balls are actually going to get dragged through and deposited in by the shark and those will just roll down the platform and come out here so that they can be easily got at the end of the game. In the centre of the board here you can see there is a little metal spindle and that's where the shark is going to attach. Underneath we've got space for some batteries, this kind takes D batteries on here so this hatch opens up here it comes off and you can put in your D battery and then that hatch goes back 
on. Now, because this hatch comes off completely, these can go missing. So if you're getting one of these, try to make sure its hatch is in place because otherwise these D-size batteries, when this is upside down, these are too big and they will just fall out. Gravity will just simply pull it out of the bottom of this game and it will just, you know, not be able to play it. So try to make sure you've actually get the hatch cover for this so that you can do it. Another thing that you need to be careful of with this game is that this switch cover here, we've got the on off switch over here, but the switch cover here has got quite thin legs here and here. So again, you've got to be able to make sure that that is not snapped if you're picking up a copy of the, this game because when you switch this on and off you might press down on it and as you press down on it that might possibly snap these so basically it's really simple we've got the battery and a switch to switch on and off and that leads through these wires into a motor inside this housing and that motor simply spins around and at the top of it there is a little rectangular magnet and that rectangular magnet when it's spinning round will move this shark forward through the polarity on that magnet so this shark needs to be attached so that this spindle goes into this hole here and it needs to be moved over so it's actually touching it and you can hear that it clicks into place because the shark actually magnetizes onto that spindle. Once it's on and it's in place you can then take your boats and attach them around the sides here. Again You've got to be careful with these boats that they don't snap because you're going to be putting quite a bit of pressure onto these bits here. So if you push down too much on this bit, it is going to snap here. So you have to be careful not to break this gate. Once the boats are in place, you then take your three men or plastic balls and you place them in the three spaces in front of your color of boat. And once that's done, you're ready to switch on the game and begin. So the object of the game is for each player to try to get one of their three men all the way around the track on the board and safely into their lifeboat without the shark eating them. In order to do that, each player can take any of the three men and move them up to three spaces. If there's another player's piece blocking your way, then you can jump over it as part of your turn. So we could go one, two, three, and you can jump over your own pieces as well. However, as you move around the board, if you find that there are two or more pieces in your way, then they are going to block you. And you could either move just one space and then stop, or you could move one of your other two pieces that are on the board instead. Of course, this game is called Shark Alert, so things are not going to be that simple because the shark is going to be constantly moving around the board in random directions, trying to grab some of your men. Sometimes the shark will grab a man and drop him down a hole into the chute where he's out of the game. Other times he might bite into him, but then later regurgitate him back out into the ocean. The shark might also pass right over a man and not end up moving him at all. And yet other times he might swipe your man with his tail and send him flying through the water. So let's see what a full but very short two player game looks like.
consensus on this game. How good is it? Is this more like the original Jaws or is it more like Jaws of Revenge? Well, it's a very, very fast game. It's not going to take you very long. It's very, very fast moving. And because of that, it's going to be a lot of speed, very hectic, quite stressful, but in a fun, enjoyable way. You've got to really be moving fast and keep on it all the time in order to get around that board and not get eaten. The mechanism, the moving shark, is really what this game is all about. So it comes down to how well that works. And it has to be said that it is a really good gimmick. It does work really well, considering it is simply a motor with a spinning magnet connected to a battery, it works really well to get that random movement of the shark and the shark really does do its job. It grabs things, it takes them into the holes, it moves them around, it flaps things with their tail. It really does do lots of random movements which you're not going to be able to predict. And it does all of that simply with a spinning magnet. I really do, I'm impressed by the simplicity and ingenuity of this really, really basic analogue circuit. Of course, being a motorised game, one of the problems that a lot of Action GT's games suffer from is that it is really, really loud. <laughs> For that reason, it's going to put off a lot of people. My wife, for instance, really does not like games which have noisy motors in them. But me personally, I can look past that and I just, it's a good, fun, quick game. The shark in the middle moving around trying to grab pieces and pull them into the centre has got quite a lot in common with the absolute classic It From The Pit. I would say that the theming and execution of this game is definitely not as good as that one, but there is a lot in common there. And for somebody who likes sharks, for somebody who loves Jaws movies, this is definitely one that I think you should have a go at getting. So for me, for shark fans, this is a recommendation, but it's clearly not for everybody. Well, until next time, where we'll have plenty more for you to see, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu to you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so nevermore shall we see you.